If you are looking for a best investment opportunity battle between Canada's top three telecommunication companies, holy banana bread, you are in the right place. This is our requested deep dive cage match between TELUS Rogers and Bell. In this battle, we will be analyzing the company's financials, market position, and overall performance to determine which company offers the investment potential. In this battle, we will be analyzing the company's financials, market position, and overall performance in order to determine which company offers the best investment potential for investors. We will be taking a hard look at their fundamentals as we compare these Canadian mega providers to find out who has the current edge for our investing dollar. We will look at everything from market cap and earnings to dividends growth and debt before we crown one of these companies as our champion in the telecommunications sector. Before we wait on hold, tell me in the comments if you are already invested in one or more of today's challengers. Thank you for dropping in on the home of free financial content on YouTube. While you are here, please like and subscribe as you don't want to miss a single moment and a huge thank you for that click. Since we have three competitors, we are going to do this deep dive a little bit differently than we usually do. We will not be breaking down each company one at a time, but it is going to get messy as we mix things up a bit. Round one of this battle will be our surface data. We will start with Bell as their market cap comes in at $41.642 billion, and they have a pretty nice looking beta of 0.46. They have an earnings per share of 2.28, and their price to earnings ratio comes in at 20.03. Their earnings are forecast to grow by 7.27% per year. In regards to fair value, Bell is currently priced at 37% as per their discounted cash flow model. Now, let's move on to Rogers as their market cap comes in at $31.881 billion and they have a slightly better beta of 0 0.40. They have an earnings per share of 3.08 and their price to earnings ratio comes in at 20.5 one. Their earnings are forecast to grow by 10.68% per year. In regards to fair value, Rogers is currently priced at 39.6% below what that discounted cash flow model predicts. Finally, we have TELUS as their market cap comes in at $38.511 billion and a beta of 0.62 so they're a little more volatile than the other two. They have an earnings per share of 1.46 and their price to earnings ratio comes in at 18.45. Their earnings are forecast to grow by 10.04% per year. In regards to fair value, TELUS is currently priced at 48.6% below their discounted cash flow models prediction. So that was round one. Wow, round one is kind of tight as there is not a lot to separate these initial fundamentals. Bell is the biggest and Rogers has the least amount of volatility. TELUS has the best PE ratio while Rogers wins the best EPS. They are also forecast to grow those earnings the most. When it comes to fair value, TELUS has the most potential for growth and in fact, many analysis are predicting a 20% or more stock price growth in the next 12 months. Based on all of the first round, we got Rogers just eking it out. However, one round does not win a battle. In round two, we are going to look at growth and dividends. We will start with Bell and they have a dividend yield of 5.996%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of 92 cents per share. Their payout ratio comes in at 117.6%. 64%. This is not well covered by their earnings or cash flow. They did raise their dividend to begin 2022 by a whopping 5.14%. When we look at growth, in 2022, they opened the year at $65.48 and then closed it at $60.03 for a return of investment of, well, negative 8.32%. And that makes a total return of negative 2.32%. Still much better than the market average. So Switching over to Rogers, they have a dividend yield of 3.133%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of 50 cents per share. Their payout ratio comes in at 64.94%. This one is well covered by their earnings and or cash flow. They did not raise their dividend in 2022 though. When we look at growth, in 2022, they opened the year at $60.57 and ended it at $64.81 for a return of investment of 7.00%. 
and factoring in that dividend, we get a total return of 10.13%. Finally, that takes us to TELUS in the second round, and they have a dividend yield of 5.209%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of 35.1 cents per share. Their payout ratio comes in at 91.23%. This is not well covered by their earnings or their cash flow. They did raise their dividend twice in 2022 for a total increase of 11.08%. Holy banana bread. When we look at growth in 2022, they opened the year at $29.38 and ended it at $27.14 for a return of investment of negative 7.62% and a total return of negative 2.41%. Oh my, that was another interesting round. And in this case, Bell won for the best passive income while Rogers won for the payout ratio. TELUS increased their dividend the most, so they get a point there. When it comes to return on investment though, Rogers was the only one on the positive side. Round two is also going to Rogers. Holy banana bread, can Rogers just simply walk away with this thing? Let's move on to the final round and see if debt can knock out a competitor or two. As usual, let's start with Bell. They have a total debt of $31.46 billion compared to total equities of $22.98 billion. This, of course, makes their debt to equity ratio 136.9%. If we look at the short term, their short term assets come in at $6.84 billion and their liabilities come in at $11.41 billion. Long term, their assets come in at $61.72 billion compared to $34.17 billion in liabilities. Their debt and and interest on that debt are well covered by operating cash flow and their earnings before interest and taxes, which is also called EBIT. Moving on to Rogers. They have a total debt of $35.25 billion compared to total equities of $9.66 billion, making their debt to equity ratio 364.8%. Holy banana bread. In all fairness, though, their debt is a little skewed due to that Shaw takeover. Short term, their short term assets come in at 18 $7.65 billion and their liabilities come in at $7.81 billion. Long term, their assets come in at $36.13 billion compared to $34.32 billion in liabilities. Their debt and interest on that debt are absolutely not well covered by operating cash flow and their earnings before interest and taxes or EBIT. Once again, it is unfair to totally judge them on that due to, well, their numbers are slightly out of alignment thanks to that takeover. Finally, we come to TELUS, and they have a total debt of $23.18 billion compared to total equities of $17.82 billion, making their debt to equity ratio 130.1%. Short term, their assets come in at $6.5 billion, and their liabilities come in at $9.88 billion. Long term, their assets come in at $47.76 billion, compared to $26.56 billion in liabilities. Their debt is not well covered by their operating cash flow. However, the interest on that debt is well covered by their EBIT. Who won round three? TELUS had the best debt to equity ratio, Rogers had the best short term pitcher, and Bell had the better long term pitcher. In round three, we have a draw between Bell and TELUS. Rogers' debt to equity ratio pretty much knocked them out of this round. So, who is the winner of this overall battle? Who is today's champion? Rogers did win two rounds, so it would be quite easy to just name them as the winner, but we need better rounds rationalization than that. If you are a short-term investor with a high focus on dividends, your winner would easily be a contest between Bell and TELUS. Bell has the higher dividends, but with the growth expected in TELUS's share price over the next year, they are a better choice. So for short-term, TELUS wins. But what about long-term? Long-term, the winner is between Rogers and TELUS. It is not a straight knockout, I can tell you that right now. It is a split decision. I am not a fan of Rogers, but they were the only ones to have a positive ROI in the bear market. And with the Shaw merger getting closer to becoming a reality, they could be in a position to really deepen their Western presence. And that will benefit their shares big time. Hellas, on the other hand, has so much potential to grow. And they are the most undervalued of the three. And they are expected to grow a lot. Can they give Rogers a run for their money? Absolutely. But is it enough to win this battle today? Unfortunately, it isn't. Rogers 
Edge, just edges out Tellus for the championship. The fact that I am biased against Rogers goes to show the math never lies. Nonetheless, all three of these telecommunication companies are blue chip and would make a great addition to your portfolio to represent, well, the telecommunication sector. We may need to do this cage match again next year to see if the math still favors Rogers. It does not have to end here. Check out my video on Canada's big six banks that I will link on the left. Otherwise, check out the video on the right that YouTube thinks you will like. Your click will decide who is right and I will see you in the next video.